So now that we have introduced osmosis as a concept, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking a little bit about how osmosis can have an effect on animal cells. You see, if I were to just draw out the animal cell here, I'm not going to draw out the, the nucleus, Golgi apparatus, uh, ER and such. Uh, you can just see the cell surface membrane and the purple color highlight is just the cytoplasm of the cell. It is very important to know that the cytoplasm contains dissolved substances. You see, yes, the cytoplasm is made up of uh, water, but it will also contain solutes within itself as well, such as glucose, salts, uh, amino acids, and so on. So the water potential of the cytoplasm cannot be zero kilopascals, because if you remember, a water potential of zero kilopascal is only possible with distilled water because it does not have any solutes in there. And the cytoplasm is not just made out of distilled water. It contains water and dissolved substances. So the water potential of the cytoplasm is probably going to be a negative value because, as I've mentioned before, the more solutes there are inside the solution, the water potential will decrease. So for the sake of today's video, I am going to say that the water potential of the animal cell is negative 300 kilopascals. You do not need to memorize this because different types of animal cells will have different water potential. I am just choosing negative 300 for the sake of this video. So what will happen if we were to immerse the animal cells in three different types of solution. If we immerse the animal cell in distilled water with a water potential of zero kilopascals, dilute salt solution, for example, water potential of negative 300 kilopascal, and concentrated salt solution in a water potential of negative 700 kilopascals. So again, I don't need you to memorize all these values. These are just values that I am choosing. Uh, except distilled water, because distilled water does have a water potential of zero kilopascals because it doesn't have any dissolved substances in it. So if you were to immerse the animal cell into these three different types of solution, will anything happen to the animal cell? The answer is yes, a lot of things can actually happen to the animal cell. In fact, sometimes it can cause harm to the cells. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at the first one. In the first one, if I were to immerse the animal cell in distilled water, remember the animal cell has a water potential of negative 300 kilopascals, and the distilled water which is surrounding the cell has a water potential of 0 kilopascals. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to determine which area has a more negative water potential and less negative water potential. So the cytoplasm's water potential is more negative, and the distilled water has a less negative water potential. Osmosis is what happens when water molecules move from an area of less negative to more negative water potential or a higher to lower water potential. And when water rushes into the cell, the water molecules are trying to equilibrate the water potential inside and outside the cell. But the problem is when too much water rushes into the cell, Pressure within the cell increases and the cell fills up like a balloon and what will actually happen is it may burst. And if it bursts, the cell is dead. That is why distilled water can be quite dangerous if we were to inject it directly into our veins because it may cause the cells in our body to swell and burst. It's not a good idea to give dehydrated patients just distilled water through an intravenous infusion. Of course, some students will ask, can I drink distilled water? Well, you can drink distilled water, but most of the time, even if you were to drink a lot of distilled water, your body will control how much water is absorbed, and most of the time, you will urinate the excess water out. The danger is what happens if in the hospital, they were to inject distilled water directly into your veins because the water can actually directly cause the cells to burst. And we don't want that to happen. In the next diagram, 
we would see what happens if you put the cell in a concentrated salt solution. So the cell, again, it has negative 300 kilopascals in its water potential, but the solution outside the cell is negative 700 kilopascals. In this case, the cytoplasm's water potential is less negative, and the concentrated salt solution's water potential is more negative. Again, osmosis is net movement of water from a less negative water potential to a more negative water potential. In this case, water rushes out of the cell. And if water rushes out of the cell, the cell loses the volume of its cytoplasm and the cell may shrink. Why is this dangerous? Because the cells are losing water. We, I mean, you know for a fact that we need water to survive. So if our cells are deprived of water, the cell will die. Of course, some students will ask, why does the cell die if it has a lack of water? Well, you see, a lot of chemical reactions that happen in your cell require water as a reactant. For example, hydrolysis of uh, proteins, hydrolysis of carbohydrates or of lipids, they require water to break down the covalent bonds. So if there's no water, important chemical reactions such as this may not be able to happen. And if that's the case, the cell may die. If you were to immerse the cell in, let's say, a dilute salt solution, notice that here, the water potential inside the cell and the water potential outside the cell, which is the salt solution, are equal. So in this case, will osmosis happen? Osmosis will not happen because there won't be a net movement of water either into the cell or out of the cell. It is very important to know that water is still moving in and out of the cell, but at an equal rate which means the amount of water going into the cell and the amount of water going out of the cell is the same. Therefore, will the cell expand or shrink? It will neither shrink nor expand because there is no net change in the volume of the cytoplasm. So in this situation over here, it's very important to know that osmosis is no longer taking place. Imagine if you were the doctor and a patient comes to the hospital and they are extremely dehydrated. They can be dehydrated due to, you know, they were lost in the jungle and they did not have enough water uh, or they had food poisoning and they had very bad diarrhea or they can also have an infectious disease known as cholera, which we will see in chapter 10, by the way. And in cholera, it may cause the person to have such severe diarrhea that they do not have enough water in their body. In that case, as a doctor, the most important thing is you will have to rehydrate the patient using something called intravenous therapy. IV or intravenous therapy is what happens when you poke a needle into the patient's vein, connect it to a bag of liquid, and the liquid flows directly into the vein and rehydrates the patient. But of course, if the patient's dehydrated, where they have a lack of water, what kind of liquid should be inside the bag? It cannot be pure water or distilled water. Of course, then students will go, wait, the patient is dehydrated. They don't have enough water. So I should give them pure water. No, if you give them pure water or distilled water, you might kill them. Because remember, when you give distilled water, Distilled water has a water potential of zero kilopascals. It may go directly into the cells of the patient and may cause the cells to swell or burst. What we do in hospitals usually is we give something called 0.9% sodium chloride solution. Don't need to memorize this, but it's just good to know. Also referred to as a normal saline solution. The normal saline solution is interesting because the normal saline solution has a water potential equal to the cell cytoplasm. So even if you were to inject normal saline solution into the patient, osmosis will not damage the cell, either causing it to shrink or causing it to burst. Neither will happen. So you are able to rehydrate the patient without causing any severe damage to the patient's cells. That is why in dehydrated patients, it is important not to just give pure water, but also add about 0.9% sodium chloride inside to prevent osmosis from damaging the cells.